Hi everyone, I'm Le Hua from Raffles Institution, and this is my presentation for RCAP Cold Space Rescue U19. My strategy to maximize scoring can be broadly divided into two objectives, movement and pickup. I will first cover the algorithms I used under the movement strategy. The basic motion of the robot is controlled by a function that takes in two arguments. Speed sets the base speed of wheel left and wheel right, while rotation is updated organically based on the combination of outputs from my other algorithms. When the robot searches for super objects or does deposits, it travels to a known coordinate on the map. To guide its motion quickly and precisely, we can utilize trigonometry to calculate the angle that we want the robot's compass to read, also known as the target angle. In this illustration, the robot is to move from the current square 0, 0 to the target square 3, 3. The compass reads in the anti-clockwise direction, so target angle equals to 315 degrees. Then, we calculate the difference between the robot's compass reading and the target angle. The rotation rate increases proportionally with this difference. One advantage of this method is faster time taken to reach the target square. Also, as the robot moves closer to the target square, its rotation rate decreases, thereby minimizing unwanted oscillatory effects on its motion. Moving on to trap and obstacle avoidance. How can we achieve this using only position information? Assign the pixels of each landmark a vector value. The magnitude and direction of this value changes dynamically depending on the robot's position for the pixel. Collectively, these values simulate forces that attract or repel the robot throughout the map. Starting off with a screenshot of the arena map, open CV techniques are used to classify the pixels of each landmark. Converting to the HSV color space, we obtain a neat visualization as shown. Hue corresponds to magnitude, while saturation corresponds to angle. However, when the robot enters no signal areas, we can only rely on ultrasonic sensor readings. The rotation rate is scaled linearly based on the lower sensor reading, and the direction is to the side with more space, i.e. where the reading is higher. In the illustration shown, the robot would rotate right. By summing the rotation components from vector map and wall avoidance algorithms, we can achieve successful trap and obstacle avoidance. For additional safeguards, when color sensors detect a trap warning, we immediately execute the trap avoidance algorithm. This flowchart summarizes my strategy for the movement objective. Next, I will cover my pickup strategy. The robot aims to collect and deposit complete red black and cyan object sets to get bonus points and spawn super plus objects. Since in any one round of deposit, we cannot get the bonus points once a super object is collected. The robot should only start collecting it after 3 to 4 consecutive red, black and cyan deposits. Thus, when the coordinate of the super object is pinged to the robot, it has to be saved for later reference. When time is running out, the robot will be forced to give up on collecting full red, black, and cyan sets. Instead, it will immediately head for deposit once an object is collected, so as to maximize points gain. In conclusion, I have certainly learned a lot in my cold space journey. In the future, it will be interesting to study how we can accurately predict object locations or improve navigation using shortest path algorithms. Last but not least, 
I would like to thank my mentor Kenneth Chow and fellow clubmates for their support.